Welcome, my baby bats. Wait, let me scooch in. <clears throat> okay, yeah, sorry, I have no makeup or anything. I'm, I'm being lazy. I took a break, refilled my drink. Just to recap everything that's happened. Okay, so we went, nobody will see us. And so, yeah, I think the dude's kid was taken. I think, like, he, that's how he's being influenced. Um, and there's that other person, that other, like, lord, whatever. Like, basically, he w he was there, but he wasn't there. And, like, everything was kind of, like, really dusty and dirty. And kind of, like, his house had kind of gone to ruin, you know. So, maybe finances is what swayed him. Um, and the other dude. Like, ow, I don't want to assume he's gay, but it's, it's <laughs> the very flamboyant apartment. The dude's not there. And his landlady's like, fuck, I don't know where he goes to. So, that that's where we're at now. Saw the chemist dude. He's analyzing our shit. And so, I guess now we're just going to go back to the other places. And try to bully them into talking to us. That That's my plan right now. Yeah, that, that, that's my plan. <laughs> so, bully the people into seeing us and talking to us. Come along, Watson. The game's afoot. The game's afoot. God, the drunk's being so sassy. Oh my god. I'm, I'm loving it. Time to bully. <laughs> Why have some of the furnishings been allowed to deteriorate? Want of money, of course. The present lord's personal habits have impoverished Ooh. and ruined our reputation. I'm sorry, Jenkins. It must be a sore trial for you. Jenkins side eye. Wow, that's all I can get from here? Okay. Wait, no. Oh, okay. Maybe I can talk to Watson more, but... Hey. Maybe we can ask him, hey, where's the kid? Yep, let's wait. Is Mr. Silverbridge available now? Still at his labours. Do you wish to leave a message? No, I wish to speak with him. He lacks the leisure and inclination to receive idle persons such as yourselves. I, I can be reached at 221B Baker Street. Please tell him that I am available at his earliest convenience. Hmm. Silverbridge has read the newspapers, I presume. We have. His sympathies to you. The master anticipates a complete recovery for Chairman Holmes. That's most reassuring. Where is the child whose toys litter the room? Master Virgil's habits can be of no concern to you. If that's all, you may leave. <coughs> I think something happened to him. Talk of the boy seems to have struck a nerve. His demeanor changed. But is the alteration significant? He might simply be one of those suffocatingly protective family retainers. Perhaps. 
but I think I saw more than duty in his eyes. I'll get here just to talk to Watson. <laughs> uh. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I oh shit. I'm stupid. God. Where the hell is this dude at? May I leave my card with you? Does he have to do this every time? Oh my god. Nor did I presume it. Perhaps you could send a note to 221B Baker Street when he returns. I suppose I might. I'll tell him you were here. I would be grateful for your trouble. This dude just spends his money on frivolous shit. Like, how do I talk to Mrs. Hudson? Like, will she just pop up? I don't know what to fucking do. Professor, have you made any headway with that spring? I'll get to it as I'm able, Mr. Holmes. Please excuse me. Okay, I don't. <clears throat> what did I not look at? You've been having a good run at the table? Decent. I'm playing defensively. Left his lordship without much to shoot at. <laughs> He'd never win a game if I knew the diamond system. Please inform Lord Lawton that this is not a social call. We have critical business to discuss with him. Very well, Mr. Holmes. That may make a difference to him. I thought I had looked at him before, but I guess I didn't. Those are sticky albums.
That's what made him get here the last time. Eh. Dang, I want more donuts. No, my lord, I will not. Do you require constant supervision, Mr. Holmes? Sorry, just curious. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, my lad. Oh, I got him! My position requires further reflection. Billiards is fascinating, don't you think? That is Sherlock's voice, so Sherlock talking to Sherlock is weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hmm. At my brother's request, I'm looking into the disappearance of the formula from the Ministry. And as a courtesy to your brother, I interrupt my leisure to receive you. But you abuse civility. The committee eventually judged that so-called disappearance to be unworthy of our attention, evidently not dissuaded by our good sense. You come here to waste my time. I could understand it after investigation and due <coughs> deliberation you had concluded that nothing untoward had occurred, <coughs> but such was not the case. Why was the inquiry so precipitously and inconclusively terminated? I won't be cross-questioned by you, Mr. Holmes, on this or any other subject. Are you aware that Mycroft has been injured in the explosion? <clears throat> I'm sorry, but that's hardly my affair. I think an attempt was made on his life. The blast was related to the disappearance of the formula. It's the nature of your business to think so, isn't it? Conspiracy theories are mother's milk to the consulting detective. I guess that was Sherlock talking when I came in. Okay. This is the medical examiner. Are you purposely offensive or merely obdurate? It is not my intention to be either. But if I am, it does not concern me. You have no position, no standing, and no authority. Damn. <clears throat> Basically, Sherlock, please kindly fuck off. Hmm. 
that. Do you recall that gouty old fellow from Hampshire, Watson? Kept gerbil? I do hold. His affliction was so advanced, we swore he could chalk his billiard cue with his knuckles. Very economical, I suppose. We know Lawton doesn't want to talk. We don't know why. An accurate, though not a particularly helpful observation. Has the subject closed his mouth? He may be more forthcoming on less volatile topics. Besides which fork to use with the fish course? <laughs> a touch, Watson. A distinct touch for all his information may be worth. Billion. Sure. Okay. Even though I looked at it. Oh, this is all I can do. Okay. Okay, I think that's all that I haven't done. Yep. Boom. Come in, Mrs. Hudson. It's from the yard, Watson. Listen, a body pulled from the Thames at the needle is not the usual type. Conventional identification, impossible. Ticket stubs from the Whitehall line suggest a civil servant. As you aren't currently engaged, you might find it diverting. I would welcome your assistance. Respectfully, G. Lestrade. Very civil of him. He wants your help. Well, we won't throw it away. Keep it for a rainy day, but I have other fish to fry. That a corpse has eclipsed the imagination of Scotland Yard is hardly remarkable. Have you deduced the cause of death? Was it murder, misadventure, or natural causes? Suicide, I shouldn't wonder. 
The body is obviously unrecognizable, perhaps from being submerged for a time. Might we solve the mystery for him? Lestrade evidently thinks so. On the other hand, he may simply be trying to occupy me. His idea of kindness. A kind thought must count for something. You have a more generous disposition than I, Watson. Comrade. What does your intuition tell you about our next move? Nothing. But cold reason suggests we should investigate Lestrade's nameless corpse. What makes you say so? Prudence. Lestrade is holding out an olive branch. Take it. He wants no animosity between you. Besides, he could compromise the confidentiality of our inquiries were he to That's win. true. He will be less interested in what you are doing if he thinks you are occupied on his behalf. Your reasoning is sound, Watson, but I don't think I'm available to its inducements. My lack of progress is obvious, Watson. Do you Check have a out the corpse. nameless corpse still needs investigating. Ah, that. Bitch. But I would prefer not to be distracted at present. Do you have a compelling reason? Seeking information from people who won't talk and, at present, can't be coerced to do so. It's frustrating, debilitating, and discouraging. We've had enough of that. My yeah. previous behavior notwithstanding, I'm not a child. I can handle adversity, Watson. Failure, of course, is not an option. Excuse me, Holmes. I meant to imply nothing beyond our need for a taste of success. Lestrade's often been an unwitting ally to our own purposes. You can deflect unwanted attention from our activities while storing up some goodwill. We may need him later. As always, Watson, your advice is faultless. The question is, do I have the wit to follow it? Yes. Yes, you do. Go. It's time we made a move, Watson. Carry on, Holmes. I'll follow your lead. Cleopatra's Needle. Is this still in London? I mean, I don't fucking know. Your name is Roach. Um, I feel bad for you, son. Constable, it's Sherlock Holmes. I'd like to survey the scene. There's a murder inquiry hereabouts. You know Inspector Lestrade don't tolerate intruders at our investigations. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm here for... For Lestrade. You can read, can't you, Roach? Lestrade has requested my assistance. No need to be snide, Mr. Holmes. I'm just following orders. <gasps> orders the last refuge of the immoral and the inept. What's oh my god! Mean? He's called the bootlicker. Jesus. I'd like to look around, if you don't mind. I do mind. The body was drug up these stairs. You'll contaminate the scene. Anyway, I scoured them stairs. There's nothing there. An unsupervised pass with the bullseye would prove more enlightening. You're right, Watson. I'm not about to do Roach's job for him. And for that helpful reminder, I'll excuse your terrible pun. Mm. 
your predilections notwithstanding, I will examine the scene, Constable. I don't like interference, Mr. Holmes. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Might try to make me look bad. That wouldn't be difficult, but I have better yeah. things to do. Ah, he's so sassy. There's something in there. Permission or no, Mr. Holmes. You've got no use for that oak. Don't mess with it. It won't use to retrieve the body. Can you distract this dumb son bitch? Ismail Pasha's gift looks hauntingly mysterious in this light. And you can't see the damage wreaked by coal dust and the climate. A decade in England has mutilated the obelisk more than three millennia in Egypt. It's sickening. Be 70 feet high, this red granite obelisk is erected in the obelisk by Tutmos III. 1475 BC, in the decades since it came to London, century to hear enough of its frictions have suffered corrosive damage from pollution. The dolt called me an intruder. Can you credit it? He's either ignorant or intentionally insulting. A little of both. The moronic and the abusive are evenly yeah, matched let's talk in shit. character. Do you recall the great Goethe's dying words, Watson? Regrettably, my German is non-existent, Holmes. Mehr Licht, he said. More light. We have a similar need. Less official surveillance might serve a similar purpose. You fuck off. I'm sure Lestrade would be stupefied if you've discovered anything of interest. I pried my eagle eye to the area. There's nothing here. Better light might reveal more, and the skills of the investigator are not unimportant. Precisely why I'm on the case. There's men for the job. I know a crime when I see it. Very sly. But I doubt your vigilance will be rewarded. Who's to say? I'll be pushing off soon for my tea. <clears throat> Did we push off some for your tea? What can you tell me about the crime, Constable? Why well, Lestrade needs you is beyond me. Seems like you're always begging information from us. As you haven't solved the case, perhaps you might humor the inspector and simply answer the question? The victim was shot at close range by an unknown assailant. Mm. Probably happened nearby and recently. The body ended up in the river. A wherryman fished it out. That's it. What do you know about the wherryman? Nothing. Don't know where he hangs his hat, or if he wears one. Inspector Lestrade talked to him. He's got the particulars at the yard. An unsupervised pass with the bullseye would prove more enlightening. You're right, Watson. I'm not about to do Roach's job for him. And for that helpful reminder, I'll excuse... So he's not going to do it with Roach there. Okay. Well then, I am going to go talk to Lestrade, tell him dude's an idiot, and then come back. Because that's how we play this game. Dang, got so many places popping up. Places to go. Places to see. Let's go 
into Silstrad. Which is more bother, Lestrad being in or being out? It's a fair question. Seems I'm the only one round here working all hours. Go in if you like. Oh, Lestrade. I need details of the corpse you hauled from the Thames, Lestrade. Middle-aged, from the thin side of average, shot in the head, cavernous hole, dead before it hit the water. The crime was witnessed? No. A riverman may have heard the shot. He found the body by the needle. He'll collect half a crown for the corpse. Claims to know nothing about how it got there. You believe him? These river taps are a dodgy lot. He'll volunteer anything that turns a profit and nothing that won't. But I don't think he did the murder. Where can I find this worthy? The body's at Bart. Not a pretty sight. His face is gone. You can't even tell what color his eyes were. The rest of him's all right. Hadn't been in the water long. I was referring to the riverman. <laughs> ah, Needham's his name. Lives off the Aldgate High Street, Six Half Moon Passage. If you're planning a visit, take a pistol. I always carry a firearm east of Bishopsgate. Still adrift in a sea of paperwork, Lestrade. I'm drowning, Mr. Holmes. Going down for the third time. Any more information about the corpse from the embankment? Nothing you don't know about. It looks like a random robbery and murder. Much obliged to you for looking into it. Stain and splintered all the maiden very arches of the of his life. Damn. Nearly really old enough to have propelled a Roman galley. Just a channel where likely the way he keeps up his living. Yep. <clears throat> He's broken a chair for firewood. Ooh. Hmm. It once helped Jin of the extremely inferior character. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to look at everything before I do that because I gotta judge you. <laughs> Hello, mouse. Tell me about the corpse you pulled from the river, won't you? I told the old Bill what I knowed. I was sculling near the White Hall steps when I heard pistol shots. A little later, I comes across a fresh, stiff, floating face down. I put one and one together, hauled him up and the needle, and waited for a copper. The steps are a good bit west of the needle, and the tide was running out to sea. You were lucky to catch up with the body. If you've seen the body, you got an odd notion of luck. The police were satisfied. Have you done army service, Needham? 
I wouldn't say no to the Queen's shilling, but I never fancied work on land. The Navy, then? You were a sailor? Never. Bunch of ponces in uniform. Couldn't navigate a drainage ditch. Seen them struggle in the Deptford Reach, just running with the tide. What were you doing on the river, Mr. Needham? Trying to earn me brass. Man's got to work day and night just to live in these hard times. Forget the fable you told the police. I think you witnessed a crime on the embankment. I saw not. Nonsense. You were close by. With no experience of small arms, you identified pistol shots. Whitehall is too distant to hear distinctly, even over water, and from there you'd never catch up to a body moving on the tide. That's just talk. Not that I say. Talk is cheap. It depends on the subject and the speaker. The police might find my arguments pure gold. Tin, more like, or I've no PC Roach and Inspector Lestrade. You have a point. <laughs> Open dude's shit while you know what? Like, he is like, he's open his shit like right in front of him. Let's be what rude. What do you think you're doing, mate? You got no business here. Like, see, this is fucking weird. Because I talked to dude, and now we have this whole separate thing with this court. Scotland Yard. Have you noticed, Doctor, that the East End reduces life to basics? If you mean it appears a mere struggle for survival, Holmes, I do. Hobbes was right, I fear. Existence on these terms is solitary, nasty, brutish, and short. What do you make of the environs, Watson? Very little, Holmes. Being here is singularly depressing. Quite. Not three miles from the Houses of Parliament, the storied amenities of the Empire appear a very different thing. Yeah, let's talk about classism. How did you come by the shoes by the fire? They don't look to be your size. Things from the river are like gifts, and a poor man can't afford an exact fit. From the river? A pair. That was fortunate. My guess is they were attached to a man's feet. As he lost the need for them, I figured to lighten his load as he passed over. Very kind of you, I'm sure. A little bit of parts to examine the body. Talk to you, Major. Fuck off. New people did. Doctor, did your examination reveal anything else of interest? Well, his lungs were in deplorable shape. Tobacco, I should think. Alcohol had begun to ravage his liver and kidneys. I would characterize his general condition as dilapidated. Wait, is he talking about the other dude from Diogenes?
Wait, no. I'm hopeful with this. Lestrade's missive suggests a problem of identification. Is it real or apparent? Very real. Extremely difficult case from his point of view. We must stop meeting like this, Dr. McCabe. Ed prefers <sighs> a wag at my local over a pint and game of darts, but I doubt that's quite in your line. You might be surprised. Inspector Lestrade has asked me to help identify the body that was pulled from the Thames. Is he on the slab? I wish Lestrade had informed me of his intention. You know my practice in these matters. What can you tell me about this victim's cause of death? The formal cause was a massive cerebral hemorrhage. The efficient cause were bullets of yeah. large caliber fired from point-blank <clears throat> range. Drowning and suicide can be dismissed then. I've been experimenting with ballistics. You have the bullets? Useless fragments. I disposed of them. The large pieces must have passed through the cavernous exit wound. Two lords to do, ain't got no face and no back of the head. Shit. <laughs> Might I examine the body? I know your methods, Mr. Holmes. Observation is your watchword. Its corollary is that without yes. knowledge, observation and deductions are worth nothing. Currently, I have very little knowledge. I hope to amend the deficiency. <laughs> Talk to him. Could I see the victim's effects? You know where I keep them. And it's only the clothes. He came in without shoes and his pockets were empty. Indeed. Yeah. Most peculiar. Most interesting. Pockets were There. I'll sign for the hat, Doctor. I'd like to take it with me. Booty. A red rose attached to a three stem is skillfully engraved on the victim's buttock. Drawn to scale, the brilliant colors of the tattoo startlingly contrast with the unnatural pallor of the victim's un otherwise unblemished backside. Oh, you can actually see it. Say anything else? I hear, yeah. They have been a blur. Oh, same thing. One bullet would certainly have done the job, Doctor. 
thoughts? The killer was a vicious psychopath. Likely, but incomplete, I think. If you say so. My interests are with the victim. Yours reside in the murderer. I prefer my work. Oh, I love the banter. Have you ever seen a tattoo like this one, Doctor? Never. Not the usual subject matter. Anchors, lions, dragons and such. Indeed. A delicate Tudor rose, the emblem of England. A unique design, colours and placement. Overall quite remarkable. He wears the rose of youth upon him, the bard says. I've always been partial to Antony and Cleopatra. Dr. McCabe, please inform me if your examinations divulge anything of further interest. I will indeed, Mr. Holmes, and vice versa, please. You may depend upon it. Okay, I have a hat and I have a thingy. Maybe I'll go talk to dude again that found the body. Oh, I didn't mean to go to... Sister, what has become of the gentleman in white? The poor dear is singing in the choir invisible, Mr. Holmes. Popped off without a word he did. Uh. What's happened here? Where is my brother, sister? Doctor says he requires complete quiet. Matron has moved him to a private room. I oh have to bring my him God. to you see. She was displeased. He'll receive no more visitors here, Mr. Holmes. Matron has decreed it. Fuck Matron. Miserable cunt. I hate you. Matron, what have you done with my brother? He is safely beyond your reach, Mr. Holmes. You have no respect for regulations or your brother's condition. And you are not above extortion. But I must do my duty. You could put me on the rack, and I would not divulge his whereabouts. Don't tempt me. Come, Watson. Oh, that horror. Fuck you, Matron. Okay, I'm going to this dude, and let's see. Oh, I forgot the dude's inventory looking at that. Stop it! Strangely, the corpse you found had no personal effects. Perhaps some of them found their way here. You'll never know. Got no rights to snoop. Man's homes his castle. If you'd prefer, I can bring back a warrant and a load of policemen. No need for that. I'm guilty of nothing. I didn't shoot the bloke. I kept him from going to sea. And took a souvenir from the body, Mr. Needham? A remembrance of your good deed? Go ahead. See what you can find. Nothing worth sixpence or I'm related to the Queen. Those are the victim's shoes, Mr. Needham. You can't possibly wear them. But they might be worth something at the Spicklefield's jumble. I wonder if they exhaust the items you relieved him of.
Would you mess about with the quality's possessions? Poor man's got no rights. I'm agog at the items you've rescued from the river. True objet trouvé. Stumped again. Anyway, I've done a lot. A lot. Oh my god, we've investigated the moida. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I love you. Bye, Jabal, brother.